Okay, so now we're going to look at uh, chapter 22.3, which is magnet magnetic fields due to currents. So I just put back this um, image from before, which you may have remembered, which I said any two of these will cause the other one. So I said if you have a, a movement of a wire in a magnetic field, it will cause a current, which we haven't, we haven't looked at this yet. But we've looked at this one. If you have a current happening inside a magnetic field, it will cause movement. So 22.1 was about a whole wire, how the whole wire will move, and 22.2 .2 was about how a single charge, which is still a current, will move. And this one here, we're going to talk about how movement by itself can generate a magnetic field. And then um, lastly, later on, we're going to talk about this creation of current through the movement inside a magnetic field. But right now, let's talk about this one, movement and turning into magnetism. Movement of charge. Oh, sorry, that's wrong. I mean, um, I, I really mean this one here. Current generating magnetic field. But you can see the similarities here. Movement of a charge or current generating a magnetic field. So, let's take a look at how this is possible. If you remember, I said a long time ago um, that a stationary wire would generate a magne magnetic field. But I didn't exactly elaborate on how or what it's going to look like or anything. So let's pretend that the charge is going upwards. So what you'll re what will happen is this will generate a magnetic field going kind of in this direction, and it will make concentric circles around it. So this is what the field lines will look like, and it will be kind of a uni uh, a form a uh, magnetic field that's kind of just radiating out of a wire. But you might be asking, you see this one here is kind of going. If you look at it from top down, you'll see that it's going anticlockwise. But how do you know which direction the magnetic field goes? Well, luckily we have this, um, this quite a great one, it's called the right hand grip rule. Right hand grip rule. And that's how you remember. So what you do is, it's very simple, you take your right hand and you pretend you're holding onto the wire in question. And all you do is you point your thumb in the direction of a current, in this case upwards, and the direction your fingers wrap around is the direction of a magnetic field. So this is kind of how it generates it. And remember, this is the reason for this is because electric fields and magnetic fields are really the same thing. Magnetic fields are just moving electric fields. So uh, obviously in a current you have moving charges and that will generate a magnetic field. Anyway, um, let's move on. So we want to really look at how magnetic fields kind of work. So we want to sketch flux patterns due to a long straight wire, so that's what we're doing here. A long straight wire, it looks, really looks like this thing here. So you see, it's the same thing. Current going across and magnetic fields just making circles around it. The next one here is a flat circular coil. So I'm not going to attempt to draw these for you because I'm not really an artist, but a flat circular coil looks like this basically. It's more or less sorry, I'm gonna make this work. But yeah, that's what it looks like. It's basically a coil of it's a coil and the magnetic field goes round like that. And you can see here that it makes these two kind of circular magnetic fields and these ones are really you can just consider them as if it was two lines coming up and down. So if you just imagine this one is going upwards, so there's a Imagine why going upwards and then why going downwards if we were just looking straight forward. Um, so this one here, let's make this one, let's call this one 1, would be this one here, 1. And this one 2, and that would be 2. So over here, the current's going upwards. Using our right hand grip rule, we can see magnetic field goes like that. And using our right hand grip rule when it's coming down, we can see we can have a magnetic field go like that, which is shown in this picture. And what's really interesting is through this, if you make this, complete this as a coil, well, through this, they make their own magnetic fields that kind of radiate outwards, but through the middle, we get a straight magnetic field that goes straight through it. So we have a, actually a uniform magnetic field going through the center of it, and kind of funny stuff happening around the outside. But it's, uh, this is because of the idea that the magnetic, field, magnetic fields are kind of actually repelling each other which we'll actually cover in a later video. But just know that a flat coil creates a field like this. And to show you a little bit more clearly, I'm going to bring up this picture. So this is what you really have to draw. So you might, you may be asked to draw um, patterns for any of these things. So now we've seen what a long straight wire looks like and what a flat circular coil looks like. So let's move on to a solenoid. So what's a solenoid, you might ask? It's really just a fancy name for a whole lot of wires wrapped together. Here's a 
artistic impression of what one might look like. It's basically a lot of wires wrapped together. It's just a it's a helical wire structure. And what is the this has a really interesting property that because of its shape can't actually see that. Sorry, I'm gonna have to um in turn this to white so that you can see this. But um it looks like oh. About that. Um, oh, my image isn't really coming. I'm going to bring the image straight across, actually. So it looks like that. And you might see that. Here we go. So you have a North Pole and a South Pole, and then it's just a whole lot of wires wrapped together in a helical shape. And what's really interesting is that on the outside, if you just look at this as a bar magnet, it just acts like a bar magnet. The North uh, magnetic field lines come out, but through the center of it, it is actually a uniform magnetic field that goes straight across it. And that's what's really useful about it. Because this is a uniform magnetic field. And a lot of experiments we do in science, we like uniform magnetic fields. Like, uh, they let us do what we want. So, this one, how do you figure out the direction of a magnetic field? Well, basically, um, it has to do... And again, this is for... This is for right-hand grip rule, just backwards. So this time, you your fingers wrap around in the direction of the current and your thumb points in the direction of a magnetic field which comes outwards like that. And another way is using the, the north-south method. So if we're trying to figure out which one's the north pole and which one's the south pole, this is what we can do. So I'm going to take this image here, move that here. So which way is the north and south pole? What you can do is you can go ahead and draw a little S or draw in. Um, if you're drawing the south pole, Okay, back to this. If you're drawing the south pole, um, this is what it looks like. That's just, you draw an S, and then you kind of put arrows on the end of it. And you'll see that the south pole, the current is going that direction. So if you look at the end, and um, the current's going clockwise, that means you're looking at the south pole, which is, in this case, the current's going clockwise if you look at it from this point of view. So that's a south end. So the magnetic field comes into it, like that. And at the north side, it's obviously just the other way, but if you can, you can kind of, sorry, uh, drew that wrong. But the north side looks just kind of like, you can kind of look, imagine like that. It goes, oh, sorry, I was actually right in the first place. But um, it looks like that. So this one goes anti-clockwise. I mean... Yeah, so if, if your current's going anti-clockwise, if you look at it from this way, you'll see the current's going anti-clockwise. So this is the north side, so the current comes out this side. And so, uh, if you imagine this, it actually is a bar magnet when appeared from outside, but inside, it actually has a uniform magnetic field going across it. So that's how a solenoid works. And, um... How do you... Now we have to realize that the solenoid does, in fact, produce a uniform magnetic field. Um, but the problem is, we can't really see inside it, it's really hard to observe, it's really hard to manipulate because all these wires are so close together. So what we have is just a variant, which is kind of like a combination between the two. And we call it, uh, uh, I'm trying to say this right, it's called a Helm, it's called a Helmholtz coil. And I'll write that down for you, Helmholtz coil, which is really just an idea that this guy Helmholtz had. Why don't we just simply take two flat coils and put them together like that? So there's one flat coil and there's another flat coil. And what kind of field pattern that would that create, you might ask? Well, it's the same thing. It's this. And you can, might see here, but what this has is you actually do have a uniform magnetic field between them. Even though there's all this great big space which you can manipulate, you can see inside. So this is really good for experimentation as well. And you might just want to, you know, take note of its existence. And this is what the magnetic field of a Helmholtz coil looks like. Again, it's kind of a bar magnet, but kind of got a kind of, it's got funny interactions of magnetic fields here and here. And I'm going to go in that more detail into how magnetic fields interact in the next video. But uh, just know that this is the shape of a Helmholtz coil. I don't believe you are expected to calculate um, the actual strength within the, uh, of the magnetic fields within these um, within these shapes or structures. And the last point we have to um, understand is that the presence of a ferrous core. So um, basically this is the idea of electromagnets. Electromagnets is any kind of circuit 
um, there's any kind of circuit which has, here we go, here's a good picture. Alright, so electromagnets are any kind of circuit which generates a magnetic force, which is basically all circuits, but, I mean electromagnet, sorry. So, this is an electromagnet. This is an electromagnet. Electromagnet. And basically, what you have to realize is that this thing here, this coil, if you add, if you wrap a coil around a uh, ferrous core, most, the best one is in fact iron, it actually makes this magnet significantly stronger. So, basically, this turns it into a, a good old bag bar magnet, like before, like this is just a solenoid. And it would be a bar magnet anyway, but because of the presence of this iron core, this can be this magnet can be a thousand times more powerful than it would be than it would otherwise be. And why is that? You might ask. Because of this, this is a formula for um, the strength of a magnetic field due to a wire, and this you should remember. It's quite important. So B equals mu I over 2 pi r, and we don't need to know how this is derived, you just kind of have to memorize it. But I mean, it makes some sense, 2 pi r, this is the circumference of a circle, and i is a current flowing through it, more current means more magnetic field. And mu, you might be wondering, what does this mean? What is mu? Mu is the permeability of um, the substance, or whatever it is. Permeability, um, you might have remembered something from, um, from magnet, um, from electric fields that we looked at is what is called permittivity. Permeability is just the same thing for magnetic fields and obviously remember we said electric magnetic fields are really the same so it's just kind of uh, permittivity you looked at from a different angle. Permeability is defined as the measure of the ability of a material to support the formation of a magnetic field within itself. In other words, it's the degree of magnetization that a, uh, a material can take. So without the spherous core, we're looking at the permeability of free air. We're just looking at the ability of air to become magnetized. But iron is much more capable of um, containing a magnetic field and supporting a magnetic field within itself. And that's why it can create a much stronger magne magnet when you put an iron core through a solenoid. And the real advantage of electromagnets is that you can turn it on and off and really just really quickly generate an artificial magnetic field. It's really simple and um, it's really good in consumer electronics when you just you don't want a magnetic field running all the time. You just want it to be on demand, on and off. So that's what uh, how that's how it works. And see, it's really quite simple. So we just went through the flat coil, the straight wire, and the long solenoid as well as the equation, which I'll write up one more time. And this I would recommend you memorize this as well. So magnetic uh, field generated is equal to mu i 2 pi r and mu is the permeability of whatever substance magnetic field is being generated through so remember that and um, i'll see you in the next video